Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. A few weeks ago, someone left a comment on one of my videos here on YouTube when they said, do you ever run out of storage? And ordinarily my answer to that question would be no, I always plan very carefully, I never run out of storage. But it happened to be on that particular Sunday afternoon, about an hour earlier, I'd been doing some backups or trying to do some backups to this particular drive here, and I discovered I couldn't do the backups because the drive was full. And I thought, don't worry, you can still do your backups on other things like the cartridges, like this one, you, you back up, and I tried to back up to a cartridge, and that was full as well. And I therefore went, hmm, I think I'd better do something about this, I need to sort out my, my backup archive storage hardware, clearly it's not sufficient. And so in this video, I'm going to show you the hardware that I've purchased to try and sort out my backup storage to get myself back on track. So, let's start with the first of my purchases, which is uh, this, uh, a Lacey D2 Quadra drive, a 5 terabyte external hard drive. This is not the most modern external hard drive on the market, it certainly isn't the cheapest, but it's the one I've been using for a long time now. This is my fifth Lacey D2 drive. So, let's get inside the thing, maybe then explain to you why it's such a good drive to get, certainly for people doing video work. One of the reasons being, in fact, that it's got a higher speed drive in. This is a 7200 RPM drive. It's in a nice metal case, which keeps it nice and cool. And because I've got other versions of this drive, that means I can share things like power supplies and things. So that's, uh, that's always good. It gives me some redundancy. I can get the thing out. Come on, there we are. This is also a very, very heavy piece of kit. And uh, how exactly does it work? This is interesting. There must be some clever method here going on. Oh, something moved there. Hope you're still in focus. Oh, there we are. It does that. And um, they were always rather good at packing the things. There's the actual drive itself, which um, has a stand that we can add to it. Amazing, isn't it? Five terabyte drives. Let's take it out the, uh, the plastic. There we are. And uh, Oh, lovely. I get excited by a new Lacey drive. And the great thing on this is also the connectivity. If you look at the back of a the drive, they get out of your way. You can see on the back there, we've got a mass of connectivity. We've got USB 3, we've got eSATA, and we've got a couple of FireWire 800 ports. Never, never use those, of course, but, um, you know, I could do if I really wanted to, but I'll be using either USB 3 or most commonly eSATA. And also we've got the power connector and the uh, on-off switch. So uh, that's the drive itself. Let's also uh, look at the bits that came with it. I can figure out how to get at them. This is a complicated piece of cardboard, isn't it? Deary me. Surely I can figure then th this must somehow just easily come apart if I could just figure out the way it easily comes apart. Oh, there we are. That's how it easily comes apart. Oh, there's loads of things in here. They've changed the power supply. Same connector as my previous drive. It's now a, a slightly, uh, oh, it's one of those things that things clip onto, isn't it? Universal for everybody. Doesn't work perfectly for anybody, but it'll work okay. And we've got our USB 3 cable there, and we've got our uh, fire, not, not, uh, what, not FireWire, that's an eSATA cable if we want to use that. And there's a FireWire cable if we wanted it. Those are the bits which will clip on the power supply. No doubt, there they are. Those will go on the top to give me a, for me, a UK plug. And uh, this is the stand for the end of the drive. Or the, this is cool. So this is what uh, the thing will mount to. Um, those are for you who stack the drives. I think you can put these in all kinds of mounts, but um, that will just go down inside there. So, oh no, you have to release it first, don't you? I haven't got a screwdriver. Let me go and get a screwdriver. And there we are, by the magic of filmmaking, I'm back with a Mr. Screwdriver, which I've just realised I don't need. Sorry, Mr. Screwdriver, not needed. It's an Allen key, isn't it? It's Allen the key, not a stand of a knife or Mr. Screwdriver. That's how this thing works. I've done these before, I should remember that. That just opens up like this. La da 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 da. Like that way. Maybe not quite as far as that. There we are and open up the other one, 
That's how this works. Yes, we've done this before. And this now will slot into the drive in the appropriate place. Slot into here, like that. That's it, there we are. And now this will now obviously Allen key back down again. And so you can mount these in all sorts of different ways, but I like, I like just having the basic stand on the bottom. Do that like that. Come on, drive. Another one over there. Yes, and there we are. We could now stand up, if we wish to, this uh, Lacey D2 Quadro. It's amazing five terabyte drive. Let's put it by its uh, other Lacey D2 Quadra friends. And there we are, you can see all the drives together. This is the fifth, as I say, I've had of these drives. The first one was 200 gigabytes. I then moved to drives which were 500 gigabytes, and then I upgraded those drives a few years ago. I did a video on that on my channel to two terabytes, but I couldn't upgrade them again because the capacity for those drives, the firmware on the um, driver board there, will be limited to 2.2 terabytes. So I had to get a new drive to go to five terabytes. And the other thing is, if we look at the back of these drives, you can see the connectivity has changed over the years from USB 2 all the way through now to the, that fantastic connectivity we have today. Right, my next purchase to upgrade my uh, backup and archive provision was uh, these two drives here. These are both uh, one terabyte Western Digital Blue 2.5 inch drives. And the reason I've got these is because I do a lot of storage in um, these things. These are uh, cartridges which are plugged into a PC, into a bay on my main PC, and they have a connection at the end for a standard SATA connection, or you can also connect with USB, but I never tend to use that. And these drives are stored in a Peli case, which makes them nice and secure and watertight and gives me good uh, off-site backup. So what I'm going to do is to upgrade a couple of these cartridges, which you might notice this has actually got a, a 300 uh, gigabyte disk in. It's going to have a one terabyte. So let's switch that disk over. And uh, there we are, we can now remove, uh, I told you wrong, it's a 320 gigabyte disk in, in these. It's actually a Western Digital Total Scorpio black drive, which is coming out. I'd rather use the black drives for backup. They're a more, more reliable, more robust, a professional drive, really an enterprise drive compared to the, the consumer blue drives. But um, you can only go up to 750 gigabytes in, in, the, in the blacks, whereas in the uh, blue, at least in this form factor, you can go up to one terabyte. So I'm gonna move these up to one terabyte get the maximum capacity in the, in the cartridge. So that goes in there like that, which is to put the screws back in. And uh, there we are, I've now added about the uh, best part of 700 gigabytes to this cart. Obviously I've got to do some data moving around between this and the, uh, and the old drive, and I've also got to fit the, uh, the other one terabyte drive in a cart. But this is certainly moving me ahead, getting me more off-site storage capacity. So, as some comedian used to say, there's more. And the more now is this two terabyte, two and a half inch drive. I've shown you how I've upgraded, got another Quadra drive that takes all the backups of projects when they've basically been completed. I've shown you the cartridges I have, which do the offsite backups in a secure storage, secure location. And if you've seen my other videos, you'll see the backup drive I have sitting on my desk, currently a six terabyte Western Digital Green Drive, but I thought it might be nice to get another level of backup just for explaining computers. Do I get proud about the backups? Yes, but I never lose files, and my whole business depends on these files, so really it's quite important I keep them safe. So anyway, I just wanted to try out one of these drives. Now this is a two and a half inch drive again. It's also a Western Digital Blue Drive, but it's two terabytes. And you might be thinking, why didn't you put two terabyte drives in a cartridge like this then? And the reason is actually because these drives are thicker. Two and a half inch drives come in four different widths these days. Seven and a half millimeters, nine millimeters, 12 and a half millimeters, and 15 millimeters. And this is a 15 millimeter deep drive, a big chunky two and a half inch drive. Now I compare that to the uh, other one terabyte drive that hadn't fitted in the cartridge yet, you'll see the width differences is very, very significant. So there's no way that this drive would have gone into one of these carts because it obviously just wouldn't fit. So what I'm gonna do is to fit it into an external um, caddy, an external hard drive enclosure. You can buy drives already in the enclosure, but I always, always like to have control myself. And the enclosure I'm going to use 
is this one from StarTech. It's not a proper storage video to we've had a StarTech product, is it? So this is an enclosure I'm going to have for that drive. Let's open this thing up. Opens nice and straightforward. This from StarTech, they haven't taken lessons from a Lacey on how to make difficult cardboard. Got instructions, I'm sure I'll read those in depth, maybe. And uh, the uh, thing itself, it's quite well packed, isn't it? We'll get that out in, in a second. And under here, there must be various things. What have we got here? Ooh, very own screwdriver. That's rather exciting, isn't it? And then there's a cable to connect to a standard USB-A to a USB-3, the micro connector. And there's also, what's this is a cable to, a, ooh, to USB-C. If I wanted to use USB-C, don't think I'd be doing that, but I could do. And also there's some, uh, some screws in a little, little screw bag there. So, uh, Let's just find some space to put all this lot, getting very messy around here. And here's the actual caddy itself in its little bag, making clanging noises. Oh, that's, that's nice. This is a brushed aluminium. That's a nice solid caddy. And uh, I think what happened, oh yes, it's come out that way as I expected it probably would. So let's put the drive in uh, here. And you'll note I'm just actually slightly edging up the circuit board because I think to get in a very large drive that will have to happen. Yes, it will. That will just fit in like that, like that. And we can now uh, re-secure the circuit board and put in the drive screws. And uh, there we are, that's mounted in there. So this now presumably will now go into the caddy itself. I think it goes in like uh, that with a little thing on the end. That goes in there. I can get this right. That doesn't go in there like that. What have I got wrong here? Something I've got wrong here. Does it go the other way up? Does it go in the other end? Yes, oh, I think I've got the ends wrong. Yes, it goes in, it go like that. It does, you have to do it the right way around. And now I just need to put in these tiny, tiny, tiny screws which go in with uh, good eyes and this particularly fine pointed Screwdriver, put that in there. Oh, that's quite firm actually. And uh, another one in here. And uh, there we are. Spare screws as always from, from StarTech, just in case we need them. Um, that's the, uh, quite a nice drive. I like that drive. I think this is gonna be a very handy drive to have around. In those weeks when I shoot uh, several hundred gigabytes of data, it'll be very handy to have a drive around that I can just use to uh, just chucks data onto as well as keeping all the backups of explaining computers. Right, I thought I'd finish off just showing you how you set up a new drive if you put a new disk into a cartridge or in, inside an enclosure or something. Here I am in Windows 7, but it's pretty much the same under Windows 10. You just go to Computer and then you go to uh, Manage on that, and that will bring up uh, Computer management, you probably guessed that one. And I'm now going to, uh, let's just size things you can see a bit. I've got my theme set for a nice big font so you can see things on screen. I'm now gonna plug in one of my new one terabyte drives. So I'll plug that in. It'll install some device driver software. It's plugged in via USB to uh, SATA interface at the moment just for testing and setup purposes. That's all ready, except of course it isn't. If I click on disk management, it will say initialize disk, this is a brand new disk. And you'll always get this when you have a disk plugged in that's never been sorted out before. So as you see, it wants to initialize the disk, it wants to use master boot record for the partition style, which is fine, which is what you should choose for drive under two terabytes. So we'll go okay on that. And that's okay, it shouldn't take too long. And if we flick down here, now there we are, there is disk two, that is the uh, drive formats to 931 gigabytes the one terabyte drive and if we just right click that we can do new simple volume and continue with that uh, that'll be fine I'll do it all as one volume and uh, don't care what drive letter it gives at the moment it won't end up on this machine anyway and uh, we'll give it a volume label which I think will be that always code my disks and next and finish and that would then just uh, format up that drive So there we are. I've increased my archive backup hardware by about nine terabytes, which means I should be able to forget about it for two, maybe three years, but we'll have to get even more backup archive storage. 
And as you might have noticed, I've done all this, I've purchased all this storage hardware without buying any form of SSD or flash memory. Well, that's almost true, but just to let you know, I have also got one of these things, which is a 128 gigabyte USB drive, a Corsair Voyager GT, and this will replace a 64 gigabyte Corsair Voyager DT, which lives in my pocket and provides the immediate offsite backup for all my projects currently in progress. Anyway, that's now it for another video. I hope you've enjoyed seeing the sort of hardware I buy when I keep, want to keep all my data safe. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, do please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.